Hey there, in this video, we're going to take a look at a really interesting autocoder using Loma 370 billion, but from Grok API, so it's going to be blazingly fast. We can also use Opus on it and Haiku from Cloud and Tropic. And we can also have user guided and all of that. But the interesting part about this autocoder is that we're going to enter an initial task, and GPT 4 is going to be the instructor for Llama 370 billion. So let's go ahead and select Llama 3, and now we're going to give it a task. So let's ask for a simple chasing game in Pygame with all the Pygame generated assets. So as soon as I enter, uh, this is just so, so fast. This, we already have our file, our working file. Is this one? It's incredibly fast. And then now GPT-4 is reviewing the code, and this is going to go on for five iterations. We can actually create a split terminal here and actually run this while all of this is happening. I don't know if you know, but right after you write Python, if you type in a file name and press tab. It auto completes, and if you have multiple files that start with that, it'll cycle through all of them. And immediately, we lost because they were too. I don't know. Right by it. okay. Anyway, so actually, we already have our second version. So this was the first version you can see in the minimap, and we have our second version, which was instructed. Looks much longer. Let's actually go ahead and run that. By the way, these code files will be available at my Patreon. The link will be in the description. We're going to talk about the code in a second. So this time, we need to run uh, v1. Now v2. Okay, let's enter the start. Oh, it's just so fast. Okay, so we're supposed to be running away and we are being caught real fast. There's also a user guided mode, but we already have v2 and v3. Let's check those out. V2. Okay, again, as you can see, it just passed. Uh, GPT, I'm not sure we can go back and read the instructions. Did it ever say here yeah, this one was problematic? Let's try to run v4. It says the display text is not defined. So, yeah, so it didn't. So this is what it did. Let's let's try something else. I mean, I guess the speed of it, which is just very incredible. Let's try a platformer game. So when the script runs, it detects the files we have created and deleted automatically. That's that's a nice feature. Let's ask for something. Let's ask for a simple jumping platform game with only in-game generated assets and pie game. You don't have to kind of say in-game generated. Otherwise, it'll try to use some images and whatnot, which we don't have. Okay, so this is what it wrote initially. Let's go ahead and run it. We have a red square, which we can jump, but we don't see any. You can go back and read the suggestions of GPT-4 is. It says boundary checking, improving jump mechanics, and elegant ground collision handling. Let's go ahead and run V1. Let's see how it's doing. V1 is our second option. Again, this works, but there is no arms. Just continuing, by the way. I just have to go to the end. It's just so fast that it's easy. You can lose track of it. Okay. So again, this, uh, let's try V3. Okay, we are getting a lot of score. Uh, we're going to get one more with uh, five iterations. And after this, we'll try maybe Haiku and uh, Sone. Uh, let's let's try to have some fun and experiment. We can, like I said, also have a user-guided mode, which we'll try. We have the final version. You can, you can as you like, with any inter interaction, inter interactions, interactions, I guess it's iterations. But we are set to five, so we end up having only five files. If you're enjoying this project, consider becoming a patron. I have worked on over 280 projects in the last year and a half. And as a patron, you'll have access to download to any code files that you like for any project. And it's a real convenience. And I believe it can benefit you for just getting into it, getting started with interesting projects, and also find the type of projects that might actually be useful to your own use case. As a patron, aside from having access to all the code for all the projects I work on, you will also have access to my courses. I have, I'm have. i currently working on a Streamlit course. You'll have access to my Fast API course and also everything GPT API course. I also have Patreon tiers for one-on-one -on -one meetings. If you'd like to talk with me, check those out as well. Thank you. Okay, let's try this with uh, real quick. I'm, I'm just curious how that would perform. I'm going to delete all these, select Haiku. I'm going to ask the same. Let's ask the chasing game. This is Haiku. It's, it's quite fast, too. It's not as fast as maybe Rock Powered Llama uh, is, you know, so maybe twice as fast, maybe three times. Anyway, we have our first code. I just have to go back and complete it. Oh, okay. I did see something with green very fast. But our second file is incoming. I can go ahead and type it in. V1. It already says you win. So this is a bit problematic, too, I suppose. It's just, okay, this is doing the same thing. We are being caught very quickly. It doesn't give us... Uh... Okay, let's try the uh, next one, V2, as well. And after that, let's maybe user-guided. Yeah, it's still... And GPT-4 wasn't able to predict it. I, I mean, detect it and tell it, I suppose, to uh, correct that. So I'm just going to turn user-guided mode to true. 
interactions and I just changed this and iteration. So it was bothering me, but okay. So we're going to have a user guided mode. So in this case, we are going to be interacting with the model with additional instructions, but the additional instructions is actually going to go to GPT-4. So GPT-4 is going to reformulate our uh, additional instructions. So let's go ahead and give Llama 3 a try again. Llama 3, yes. Uh, let's ask for a platform game, maybe jumping platform game, and then let's play it. Okay, so in the interactive mode, then now that it's done, it's asking if you want to add any additional instructions here into this file. And we can, I, I kept it this way, so you can actually enter quite a lot of instructions if you want. You're not limited to just what you can enter in the terminal. And then if you want to skip this process, just if you enter, then it'll be just like previously, just automatic, automatic version. Except that at every iteration, you have a chance to, chance to play around with it. So let's go ahead and run it, see if there's any issues, which I'm, there will be. Oh. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, except there's two. Let me try to write instructions. Okay, I said there seems to be many, too many platforms appearing while the game is ongoing and there are no winning conditions or losing conditions. Let's go ahead. So now when we do that, let's see a platform generation rate. See, CPT4 is now going to instruct it. It's actually taking what we said into account. The game tends to generate too many platforms. Suggested improvements, implement the cooldown. See, last platform time, it's suggesting some code. Also game winning and losing conditions, but it also is also suggesting a third one. It's instructed to suggest three improvements. It's suggesting performance and player movement. So let's see, this uh, had some additional code. V1, we run it. This is nice, actually much nicer, but I still don't know what the winning condition is. This way we can actually iterate. You can answer your instructions. These instructions are clear each time. And uh, so you can, you have to enter new instructions, but if you wanted to just continue, you can press enter and then it'll, GPT will review it. Why did I choose GPT-4 as the reviewer? Because I originally did this with Opus and Opus tends to return so much more code. And I thought GPT-4 is maybe better at reasoning. That's that was my thinking. And then Opus will write the code because it's not so lazy. Okay, let's try this latest code too. Let's see if there's a difference. It added some additional code in there. There's a score and the score is going up infinitely but now we actually have different sizes of blocks being added platforms so this is definitely interesting intuitive i mean intuitive i, mean, I guess interesting automated autocoder like i said you can run this with back or i guess here you can run it with it's delete llama 3 is 70 billion powered by grok api you need to have your grok api key opus which is from anthropic api key sonnet and haiku and of course it uses open ai gpt4 to instruct so you need uh, that as long as you have those, then it should work just fine. Like I said, the code files will be at Patreon. The link will be in the description. And we will be now taking a look at the code. But I'm going to use uh, OpenAI Unified, Claude Unified, and Brock Unified classes that I've created. They're pretty much all the same, except for model differences and some slight differences between Claude Unified and OpenAI Unified, the way you set the API key. But Essentially, it just keeps track of the necessary parameters, such as trimming of the history, how much memory you want to keep, and uh, it has some useful methods. And also, of course, it just makes the regular call, both in streaming mode or otherwise. So it's really, really a helpful class. We're not going to get so much into it. As I've already done that before, you can find all my videos at my website, but you can search for OpenAI Unified. And this video, in this video, I actually explained how I created it. And for Cloud Unified, Cloud Autocoder, Actually, easy Opus Autocoder. I kind of get into the more of the details of the Cloud Unified class. You can take a look at those. And code files for each of my projects is available, of course, at my Patreon link. You can find the links at uh, my website, which is echoive.live, right then and there. And if you're a patron, you can download all to all my projects easily. So so we are unified, we are we are importing Grok Chat, Cloud, Cloud Chat, and GPT calls. These will automatically detect your API key from your uh, environment variables, but you can set them here inside of each class, okay? Or you can actually set them when you are initializing the class, for example, right here. When, Grok, when, you, when we are initializing Grok chat, you can put in an API key argument, okay? But I, I, I tend to do it from the class, but you can also uh, set it as your environment variable. If you, you can set the cloud uh, right here and GPT right here, the API key. And uh, we are going to use a working file. So we are we are actually creating a working file name using the working file and file extension. You can change this. This is if you want to work with Python files. So we are creating a dynamic working file name, which is going to be what we write here as the autocoder codes. User guided true. I 
if you want it all automatic, let's set it to false and iterations five, let's set it to three for code download purposes. So copy this here because this is where it needs to go. So if user guided, then we create an additional instructions.txt file. This file is cleared each time at each iteration. You can enter as much instructions that it'll fit the model's context limit. And then we, uh, in the beginning of the script, we check for files if present, which have working file in them. If there is, then we ask the user whether they want to delete it or not. Because since this is an iterative autocoder, it doesn't have any history other than what you have inputted it, other than the instructions you may have given it other than what GPT-4 instructs it and the last file that it has worked on. So it just gets the latest file. So if there's working files present, then it is going to try to read that. That's why we, we ask the user if they want to delete it. If so, then we delete it. If not, then we're going to, in the initial first run of the script, we're going to grab whatever is in working underscore file.py. You can actually create a file like this and put stuff in there. And you can let the auto llama three seventy billion autocoder continue from there. So then we after that we print all the names, and now we're gonna choose so uh, with some logic to make sure that uh, the choices is valid. If it's one, then we create a working file name using llama three. We print the informative statement. We initialize grok chat, uh, and then we add a system message. You can pause the video and read that. And otherwise, we are going to create a file name based on, so this is just a bunch of file statements, whether we want to work with Opus, Haiku, or Sonnet, and then setting the system message, initializing the uh, class or the uh, Claude, and setting the system message. This is a slightly different, because uh, Claude accepts its system message as a parameter, not as a system message. And then we, of course, initialize GPT-4, because that's going to be our code reviewer. This is the system message for that. And then here we we open this is, this is a function to open the working file, whatever the file name is, because the file name is going to generate sorry a change. And then we take in user input. If it's user guided, we set n iterations to infinity because it's going to go on until you cancel it. And we initialize n to zero and get some uh, additional instructions to initialize it to empty string. Remember, we are going to read them from this file. And uh, if if it's n equals zero, this is the first creation of the autocoder, we check if it's user-guided. If it's user-guided, we read the additional instructions. And then if additional instructions, we augment the initial user input with additional instructions and information, plus the initial user input, which is what we have taken from the uh, user. And then we reset the additional instructions with an empty string. So we can, so the user can write more stuff onto it. We open the working file contents, and then we check if the working file content, and we augment the initial user input with that. We say this is the file we're working on plus the user input. And then we just make a call with the chat method of the OpenAI Unified class, which then calls the get response method right here. Just makes an, a call to the appropriate API. And once we receive the code or response, so here we are either putting initial user input if there's no additional instructions. Otherwise, we are doing the initial user input augmented because that's going to include additional instructions. Then we try to parse it from, we try to parse this triple backticks Python. So if you turn it parse the because that's how the model is instructed to return it in between these tags. That doesn't work. We do look for a triple backticks. Sometimes it fails and we open the working file, write it, and we iterate over it. And and then in our next iteration, we again check if it's user guided, do the exact same thing, and then go to open the working file content. Our working file name will have changed after this iteration going going into the future. And this is where the reviewing comes in. We do have the else statement because originally we check if it's zero. That's our first iteration. Otherwise, we check. Otherwise, it's, it's future iterations. That's why we're going to get a GPT response because the code has been generated and we need the review. So we again use the chat uh, method again of the class to review the code along with all the other additional instructions. And then we then code response. We parse it with the working file name and then we write it to file. And if we have reached the final iterations, then we break. So it's pretty cool. You can actually modify it. So it should be easy to modify. It's in a script format. Yeah, so this will be available at my Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this project, consider becoming a patron. I have worked on over 280 projects in the last year and a half, and as a patron, you'll have access to download to any code files that you like for any project. And it's a real convenience. And I believe it can benefit you for if you're just getting into it, getting started with interesting projects, and also find the type of projects that might actually be useful to your own use case. As a patron, aside from having access to all the code for all the projects I work on, you will also have access to my courses. I have, I'm currently working on a Streamlit course. You'll have access to my Fast API course and also everything GPT API course. 
I also have Patreon tiers for one-on-one meetings. If you would like to talk with me, check those out as well. Thank you.